Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church here in Collingwood. And it's good to see all who are present. Thank you for joining us. We're going to begin by singing O Canada. Welcome again, and uh, thank you for joining us. This week is Canada Day, and this week we also have to bear in mind some of the information that has recently become more widely available about what has taken place. The residential schools and the many lives that... Uh, were lost during that period of time. Many people didn't know what was taking place. And uh, I think it would be good for us this morning just to pause and reflect and just spend a few moments in silence as we think about the many families that were affected Our next hymn is for the beauty of the earth.
As part of our worship, we bring our tithes and offerings and we invite the ushers now to wait upon you. It's a privilege for us to come in prayer to God, to know that we can come freely into his presence and bring our prayers and our petitions to him. We know the value of prayer and uh, I'm going to invite you to quietly where you are, bring your own prayers and then I will lead in a prayer. So let's pray. We come to you this morning, O oh God, and we give you thanks for all your faithfulness to us, for the many gifts that we receive from you day by day. We thank you especially for your Son who came into the world to be our Saviour, and the Holy Spirit who is present with us. We ask, O oh God, that during this time this morning that you will presence yourself with us. We thank you that we can bring our prayers collectively to you. You know those things that are on our hearts. You know those individuals who need a special touch from you. And Lord, we pray that you will help each one. This morning, Lord, we bring each member of this church to you. We ask, Lord, that you will be with them wherever they are. We pray for, continue to pray for Doug Fortune and uh, his recovery, uh, for Anne Rimmer's brother-in-law, for Blanche and Collie Foster, and also, Lord, we think about uh, Carol Miller and Bob. Lord, there are so many within our congregation who have special needs, and you know each of us. And we pray, Lord, that we might recognize that you invite us to come and wait upon you. We give you thanks for every blessing. We thank you for the freedom to meet this morning. We ask, Lord, that you will help us as we continue 
to serve you wherever we find ourselves, that we might be a blessing to others. As we come, Lord, we pray for our, our nation. Lord, you know the, the dark years that have been affected by this, the awful events that have taken place. And we ask, Lord, for each family that has lost loved ones, that, Lord, that you will bring comfort and strength. And that those who are involved will repent and recognize the harm that has been done. Lord, help us to learn from history, to look forward to hear your words that we should love. And Lord, help us this morning as we pray for each level of government that they might be sensitive to you. And Lord, that we ourselves might be faithful to you and demonstrate your love in our lives. And so, Lord, we pray that you help all who are troubled by the fears of COVID. And we ask, Lord, that you bring peace, that we might get through this and that we might return to normality. So again, we just thank you for every blessing. Bring our prayers to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us when to pray, to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Canada Day is normally a celebration. Uh, this year, it's not, last year was not able to celebrate because of the uh, pandemic. Again, the same is true. But this year especially, there is there are other factors that are in play. And there are some people who say Canada Day should not be celebrated. But I want to, this morning, bring us to the place where God wants us to be as uh, people here living in Canada. We are the people of God. We are part of the family of God. And we need to hear what God has to say to us and how we should respond to the different circumstances that we find ourselves in. And the title of my message is Prayer, and I want to read from 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, beginning to read at verse 15. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now that to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them you may fight the battle well, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected, so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. Among them are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. I urge them, First of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Saviour, 
who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This is this has now been witnessed. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose I was appointed a herald and apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. God will bless that reading of his word to us. The Apostle Paul was certainly a man of prayer. As he opens each of his letters, he says that he is praying for each one. He also always tempers it with thanksgiving. How do we pray? In days like today, how do we pray? How do we pray when uh, it seems as if there is a, an attempt to reduce the way in which we as believers can meet because of the pandemic there has been we've been closed and not able to meet because of government uh, rules and regulations it also in these days we also having been made aware of the dark days of the residential schools and what has been discovered we don't have answers. But one thing is for sure that whatever was done was not done in the right way. If we look at the early church, and we need to do that because we don't understand sometimes the way in which the early church was affected by the powers that were in place. They were under Roman authority, Roman rule. And Caesar was the God. But the believers, those who came to faith in Christ, they shared together. They fellowshiped together. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Those things were clear in the early church. They did not set up protests. They instead continued faithfully, steadfastly, in the apostles' teaching to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. That's where we need to be as, as believers. We need to devote ourselves to the teaching of the word. What was it that was the, we, I discussed that a few weeks back. What was the apostles teaching? It was what Jesus had taught. And Jesus taught that we should love, not hate. That we should love our enemies. That we should be marked out as those who love. They will know that you are my disciples because you have love one for the other. And in the early church, although there was opposition, although each of the apostles faced persecution, they continued to spread the word. They continued to stand firm on the fact that Paul describes here a trustworthy saying that is, deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. His focus again is on Jesus. And the focus of the early church was on Jesus. His death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his coming again. It was a recognition of all that God had planned. It was Peter that got up at Pentecost and preached the message to the people present there. 
giving them the opportunity to repent of the way in which they had treated the Son of God. And here Paul openly describes himself as the worst of sinners. Here is the Apostle Paul admitting to Timothy that it is because of the grace of God, the mercy shown to me, for that very reason I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. You see, the Apostle Paul was living a life different from the way in which he had been before his encounter with Jesus. Before his encounter with Jesus, he was amongst those authorities who opposed the church. He was stood holding the clothes of those who stoned Stephen. He was on his way to persecute the church when he was confronted on that Damascus road by the risen Christ. And his life was turned around. And he was, he received the mercy of God. He received forgiveness for the past. He received new life. He received forgiveness. And he went on, continued on, recognizing that God called him to be one who was to suffer, but also to be an example to the early church, to be an example of how the early church needed to respond, to recognize God's mercy, to recognize it's not something that we deserve, but to realize that God is a God who forgives. If we come to him and confess, he will forgive us. Because of the way in which he was treated, you'd expect him to speak poorly of those in authority. But not so. Here, as Paul is sharing with Timothy, the young man who is given a gift of ministry, who is called by God to serve him. Paul was the means by which he came into that place. And here in chapter 2 of 1 Timothy, Paul says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. Stop and think about those words. I'm going to go through those just for a moment. Petitions. Many people sign petitions, but here it's petitioning God. Coming to God and asking. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. And so here he is said, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, how much we need to pray for all people. Intercession, that means coming to God on behalf of others. As this morning we come to God on behalf of those who've been affected by the awful events that have come to light in recent days. And come to a place of thanksgiving. I urge, first of all, petitions, prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people. No one excluded. We need to be praying for all people. There is nobody that we should not be praying for. We can be thankful for many things. We're thankful for the measure of freedom that we have to share our faith. 
It was much more difficult in the days that Paul is writing here to Timothy. But here is Paul laying, laying it down in a strong way to Timothy that we need to be urged and first of all pr petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. And then he goes on to describe for kings and all those in authority. Think about it. We need to be praying for those in authority. We need to be petitioning God on behalf of those in authority. That we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So he's not just saying pray for all people, ordinary people, but you need to pray for those who have power. Those who have authority over us. Recognizing that the, the one who has total authority is Jesus. Because all authority, Jesus said, has been given to me. Therefore go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I fall short. We need to be praying for those in authority. Here in Canada, we need to be praying for our government, federal government, provincial government. We recognize and we should not have closed eyes to what is happening. We need to be aware of what is taking place. That we can pray intelligently. From some of the things that I am learning about the bills that are being passed through Parliament at the moment, it seems to me that the, anybody who does not agree with the government policy could find themselves in trouble. And one law that is on the table is even a person can come and say that you hate them or that they've been upset is something you've said. And they don't have to identify themselves, you or I could upset someone and face court because of that. We need to be aware and we need to pray for our government. A government that by and large seems to reject Christianity, reject the way in which God loves the world. And we need to recognize that as Paul here is saying, pray for all people. We need to recognize that the Church of God is made up of people from all nations, that we are all one in Christ. When we are being told many different things, we need to be careful that we hold on to the truth. And the truth is this, that as Paul is contending for the faith, as sure he is sharing with Timothy, you need to be praying that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Here he is saying the most important thing is that people come into a relationship with God through knowing Jesus Christ as Savior. Maybe we lose focus of that, but that's the main message that is proclaimed. It's not something that's forced, it's an option. The people need to be given an option to choose to follow Jesus, to acknowledge that he is the one who came into the world to save us. 
For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. You see, he is pointing to Jesus. He's not pointing to the authorities, but he's praying that those in authority will come into a relationship with Jesus. That's what we need to be praying, that they come into a relationship with Jesus, to know his forgiveness, to recognize that he is able to give us a new life and a new way of living, a way that will make a difference in the lives of other people as they see that we are not fearful, as they see that we are strong in the Lord, as they see that we share love, not hate, as we share God's love. There's much that's been done through the years in the name of Christianity that has not been good. And we have to acknowledge that. But that doesn't stop us from coming back to basics. The basics of the teaching of Jesus. Recognizing that he is the one who is all important. That he is the one who gives us new life. He is the one who gives us hope for the future. And so Paul, as he is sharing here, reminding Timothy that he needs to be praying for all people. And the prayer that they would come to a knowledge of the truth. The early church faced very real persecution. Paul uh, described some of the things that he went through in one of his letters to the Corinthians. But he didn't spend time on that. He said that those things happened that he might not rely on himself. Peter, in his first letter, says something important that we need to recognize. In chapter 2 of 1 Peter, we read this, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That's what Paul described, receiving mercy. We know that we can't hold ourselves up as good. The Bible tells us all have sinned. We all have failed. But because of God's mercy, we receive forgiveness. We receive new life. Then Peter goes on, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits you. Do you hear that? Here he is saying, he is really saying that we are citizens of heaven. You know, I remember the day when I became a citizen of Canada, and I was so thankful for that day to become a citizen of Canada. But more than that, I'm a citizen of heaven. Here, Peter is reminding us that we are foreigners and exiles. In other words, the world in which we live is living its way, but we are different because of who we belong to. In verse 13 he said, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's 
servants. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honour the emperor. That would not have been easy for the church. But it was something that they did. And it was the way in which the gospel spread. The good news spread throughout the world because of those who, despite the persecution, held on to their faith, prayed for all people. May we learn to be the people that God calls us to be. Jesus himself prayed for us. Listen to part of his prayer in John 17. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you've sent me. I've made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. The matter of recognizing that we need to be a people who share love. We are known by our love. I pray that God will help us in these days to pray more urgently, not just for those in authority, but for all people. Many people who are being led astray, many people who are being deceived, In the Old Testament, when Solomon finished the temple building and the royal palace, the Lord appeared to him and said, I've heard your prayer and have chosen you, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. I heard your prayer and chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. That's where we need to be. Calling upon God My people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways that I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God loves you. He loves me. He wants us to love as he loved. And in that love we pray. We come to him with prayers, petitions, with thanksgiving. Sometimes we wonder how can we be thankful, what can we be thankful for, but I'm sure each of us can at certain times pause and remember what we are thankful for. The way that the early church began and the pressure and the persecution, they continued on declaring Jesus as Lord of all, declaring Jesus as Saviour, declaring Jesus as the hope. May God help us to do the same, to hold on to the truth, to pray as never before. There's so much that we need to be praying about. So much we need to be praying for. As there's so much division in our land. Jesus came to reconcile, to bring us together. And Jude says this, and this is where I conclude. 
my message for today. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Today we're going to conclude the service early because we will be having our annual general meeting. Everybody is welcome to join us for that. Um, it will be a short meeting, but uh, we will, after we've this hymn and the benediction, uh, we'll have a short break and then we'll call people together, whoever stays behind, to join us for our annual general meeting that has been postponed because of COVID. But we know we need to hold it, and so it's going to be held here in the sanctuary immediately following this service. Now, thank you all, our Lord. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. May we keep focused on Jesus and may we continue to pray for all people. And may we direct them to you. Help us, Lord, in these days to stand firm and to hold on to your word and declare the truth that you love and that you are merciful and kind, that you gave your Son for us and so we pray, Lord, as we go from here today, that we might be encouraged and know your strength and your power. May we know your presence with us. May we know the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.